All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 18th, 2019, and I can't help but get a little giggle and <laughs> giddy when I when I'm I'm knowingly looking at the date and about to share more understanding with you guys. <laughs> it's so awesome. It is so awesome, guys. We know we're so close. We we have been so blessed in this ministry, so, so blessed in this ministry to be given the understanding that we've been given. I mean, it's incredible. It is so, so incredible. God is good. The word Yeshua is being understood, and the Holy Spirit is the one revealing it. This guy here on this end of the mic, Alan, is simply the mouthpiece. I'm being given the understanding to put the pieces together and share it with those who he will bring to listen. And guys, <clears throat> man, right here's that full moon time. A lot of people are calling it Purim. Some think the year already began here and then this is Passover. I'm looking at this as the beginning of the year. And of course, I mentioned it before, your your Passover is right here. And your 40 days from that brings you to what? Right here. Remember, Israel will not turn 71 without war. All right? Destruction coming upon her. So, guys, where we are and what we understand and what we're going to share more today. <clears throat> for everybody's had a good weekend. I know I went away uh, for the day uh, on Friday with my wife and kids. We went. Uh, we live literally an hour away from the middle of the mountains in Banff, in the Rocky Mountains. <clears throat> and boy, oh boy, it was beautiful. We took uh, these gondolas up, these little gondolas. I'd never done that in my almost 25 years or 25 years of living in Calgary. <clears throat> it was beautiful. Such a such a beautiful thing to go uh, and spend time with family and see the Lord's creation from the top of it. I'll tell you what, it was beautiful. You know what? I didn't prepare this, so I'll share a couple pictures, and I'll even do what? I'll even let you guys see what I look like, all right? Hold on. All right, so I just paused for a moment. So I'm going to um, – I'll show you guys some pictures just to show you. We just went out for the day um, just to, you know, spend some time with family. We do it once a year. <laughs> That's it. Once a year, <laughs> we go to Banff, and this was something new. Like I said, we had never done this before. And guys, I'll just show you quickly. You guys can see my family. You'll finally get to see a picture of me. And I just want to show you because it was so, so, so beautiful. If we were here again and it was summertime, uh, I would go again once more to, to see what it looks like in the summer. Because I will tell you guys, we were up there. All right, you're going to see this place. It even says 7,500 feet up. And we were another 200 or so, two to 300 feet up. We were 77, 7,800 feet up uh, at the top of the mountain. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm going to show you some, some pictures. And then what we're going to do today is I, I'm not following a specific, you know, through the seven years first of seals and then through the seven years of trumpets. I'm going to go into different scriptures. I'm going to show you from Hosea and different things in Matthew, Mark, and Luke and, and Daniel and, and show you these connections, um, you know, there where was another one. Um, uh, 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 oh, anyways, we'll get into it, and you're gonna have to, you know, feel free to to pause and and look up the scriptures and pray on it and seek the understanding of it, because what we're gonna show today is exactly where these scriptures line up in the end time understanding. Right, this ministry has been revealed, the scriptures speaking to us in the end times and where they go. Because the truth is 14 years. It is two sets of sevens, not seven years. And we'll show that a little bit more today from different angles throughout. And what spurred this on, excuse me, was a couple things. One thing that I mentioned a couple times uh, found in Luke 22 and Matthew 19 about, excuse me, the 12 apostles. And then there's another 12 in Matthew. They don't get the same things. And we're going to touch on that as in a later piece of it. And it, it leads me into chapter 21 of Revelation. And a big deal of this 
is the foundation. I used to look at the 144,000 as the foundation. And it wasn't until something hit me and it's been, the Lord has been leading me in the, in the Luke 22, Matthew 19 for a little while now. And I touched on it on a video just showing in, you know, in Matthew, it says Jesus with the regeneration and the 12 for everything that they gave up, they'll get multiples of a hundred. Well, in Luke, we don't see that in Luke, these 12 are going to get kingdoms just as Jesus received kingdoms and everything that was will be. Did, did the 12 apostles all get kingdoms? No. How about the 12 tribes? Are all their kingdoms here on earth? Did they receive all their kingdoms in the land? Nope. You see, all these things are prophetic to the end. And another thing that I wanted to show, I'm going to show you a, a piece of a video, maybe a couple minutes or so from Paul Begley. And it was something else, which is why this video is going to be a little bit of everything, to show you the true understanding that is revealed here in this ministry. You know, a lot of pastors, when it comes to to talking or, or yeah, or talking about the third temple and <clears throat> and what's coming with the temple and everything else, anytime there's anytime there's scripture talking about the temple um, or the building of the temple, they all say that that's the time, that's the time, that's the time. This is what we're talking about now. This is what's coming. And it's all because they haven't been revealed the understanding as to who the books are speaking to. This ministry began, um, when it really began in September of 2017, first thing that was revealed to me in the understanding was who the Gospels were speaking to. Then I was revealed the 14 years. And I didn't look for these things. I didn't even know these were even things. Then we revealed the 14 years, and then from there, more books like Zechariah and Hosea and all these different books started opening up, or Acts. Acts 14, uh, Acts has 28 chapters. There's 14 and 14. There are two different viewpoints of the, the 14 years. It's all revealed in, in, in those understandings of these books, and we're going to do that again today in this piece that I'm going to show you with Paul Begley is what got me going down a, a little bit of that path. So today we're going to have a variety of these things being shown. We're going to show you some things in uh, in Ezekiel as well. Uh, you know, Ezekiel 38, 39, a lot of people talk about that war, and we've shown it here as to where that is. That's talking about the year 2023 and 2024, and then the Lord's going to end it at the end of uh, late 2023. That's exactly what we see in Ezekiel 39, which would be the end of the six seal time frame. And when you see it, when you see the understanding that will come from it, and remember, we've talked about it before. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we've spoken about this before, you know that about six months of silence, right? It says when Paul, uh, sorry, when John in heaven, he says it was about half an hour of silence in heaven. And I say it's about six months. I'm going to show you um, a seven-month connection. All right, about six months. It was Paul was trying to relate it in earthly time while being in heaven. All right, and I'm going to show you that today. It is unbelievable. Okay, all of these connections and going right to Revelation 21. Like I said, all of this time, you know, we maybe many of you as well, they they think that, and we've thought, I've thought, that when something is talking about the foundation, it was always based on the 144,000. Now, guys, this happens so, so, so much. We have this old thinking, even me, even me. There's some of these old things, you know, because we've been taught all of our lives that there, it's seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years. Now, I know it's not seven years. It's two sets of sevens. We, we, if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, this ministry, you know the truth is 14 years. And the 14 years from right now in the 70th year where we're days away from it beginning, 14 years from this time equals 2,000 years from Christ's death and resurrection to when he said he would return feet down on the Mount of Olives. All right? 2,000 years equals 14 years from now, and it just so happens it's the 70th year, and it's coming to an end. 
All right. But here's the thing. With all of those years of seven years, seven years, every once in a while, I something is still stuck. Right. And not that I, I realized it was stuck until something is revealed new in the understanding. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, that's what it is. And you're going to see it with New Jerusalem when it talks about in Revelation 21. And many of us, I'll speak for myself, but I know many of you and many teachers out there believe that the foundation has to do with the 144,000. It's not. What is, how is a house built? Foundation, then walls, then the openings, right? Then the doors or gates. All right, and when you read the book of, uh, uh, when you read chapter 21 of Revelation, you're going to see there are foundations mentioned, there are walls mentioned, and there are gates mentioned. And even though the scriptures was, were telling us who these people were, I, I, never under, I never caught on. I haven't spent too much time in that later part of the book of Revelation. But I did for a reason when I was talking to one of our brothers, Keith, because chapter 7, chapter 14, and chapter 21, right? The last seven years. I don't like to share that, that information on this channel, uh, in this ministry right now. Um, it, just, it just reveals more of the last 777, okay? It's not, a, it's not a big mystery thing. But if I go in to explain it to people, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that will say, well, well, wait a second, wait a second. See, I knew it. That was the rapture time, and it's not the... And I just don't want to deal with all of everything that's going to come from that because it's just a, it's just another thing to confirm the understanding, all right? But wait until you see what all these things that we're going to go in through, okay? But I'll show you some pictures first. I know a lot of people over time have said, oh, show us your picture, show us your picture. Who are you, Alan? <laughs> I wasn't doing it on purpose. I just didn't think it was necessary to have my face on the screen during all the teachings, all right? So you're still not going to get my face in the corner of the screen doing all these teachings, all right? It's about the Word, but I wanted to show you me and my family and just what we did in, in the on Friday last week. We left at 9 a.m. and we were back by 9 p.m. We had brunch, we had dinner, and no, we didn't have dinner here. Uh, I don't know how much this would have cost, uh, but look at how high this restaurant is. It is literally on the top of the mountain. You can't get there except by gondola. <laughs> it was awesome. And we didn't know. It was renovated. Everything was fixed up and done the last two years. So I guess the, the people were saying we went at a great time. So that's how high up it was, all right? This is us uh, on our way there. No, I didn't take the picture. My wife did. All right? We don't live too far from this, so it's beautiful. All right, there's the family. There's my wife, my son. So that's my wife, Winnie, my son, Ocean, and my daughter Elena. My son, uh, we were trying to think for a name and we didn't want some common name. We wanted something that was maybe powerful, but you know, just a good name. And so his name's Ocean because it could be calm, it could be strong. And he's a good strong boy too, by the way. <laughs> and uh, so we gave him the name Ocean. His middle name, in case uh, he grew up and he didn't like it, uh, we gave him William. So if you wanted Will, because William's a powerful name too. And so that's the name we gave him. Now my daughter's name is Elena. And it was my wife's idea. Her name is Elena Wynn Dubray. So she, my, my wife's idea was she was named after me. So my name is A-L-A-I-N, right? The French Allen. And it was my wife's name to say, well, why don't we, let's name her Elena after you. Just put an A on the end. So same spelling with an A on the end. So mom's idea was to name her after dad. How sweet is that, right? But we also named her after mom. Be, uh, her second name, her middle name, is Win, so my wife's name is Winnie. Everybody calls her Win, and uh, so her name is Elena Win. Pretty interesting, eh? All right, so let's keep going. Oh, there I am. I didn't realize it was going to be that quick. <laughs> There's my son Ocean, and there you go. There's Alan, the voice you're hearing. All right, there you go. You got to see me finally. So check this out. This is on the way up the mountain. So we're in the gondola here. You can see the difference in heights. This is downtown Banff. This is all, essentially all of Banff right here. This is the castle, and I'll even zoom up to show you. This is uh, the Banff Springs Hotel, opened in 1888, and it was $3.50 a room. Look at where it is, guys. 
in the middle of the mountains, right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. I mean, who was coming up here back then, right? Crazy. And uh, $3.50 a night to stay. See, there it is, to stay back then. And uh, imagine how long that took. Wow, the elites were all coming up here, right? Now I think the basic room, uh, the, the lowest room you can get is $350 a night. And this goes into the city. These are all the rivers going through the Rocky Mountains. You know, we've got a brother in Christ, uh, Keith, that I was talking to with these pictures and sending him some. Uh, he's a fly fisherman. This is one of the, the fly fishing capitals of the world here. All right, there we go. Now we're at the top. You can see the snow's picked up. So see, we're much higher. We were about this level. Now we're right up here on another mountain, all right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. God's creation, right? It was so amazing. This here, there was no fenced off area. Literally, if somebody stepped on this, this would have probably fallen like an avalanche. Crazy. Like, look at how high we are. Right? We're still going a little bit higher. It was beautiful. Look at that. I didn't get them to stand at different spots. They just were, and I took the picture. I didn't even realize it till after. All this is built on the top edges of the mountainside going right up to the top. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I was so happy we went. It was maybe 10 degrees colder than down below. Um, not too, too bad. It really wasn't too bad, so that was nice. And... This is the peak. This is the very top. That's myself, my son, and my daughter. And this, guess what this was, guys? Yeah, it was a watch station, a watchtower. You can look in through the plexiglass, and there was an old bunk bed and things in there, a little setup. And they would watch for the fires uh, throughout the valleys and everywhere else. And that was their job. And uh, look, you can see the height we're at. We're at about seven. This is the very top. So we're at about 77, 7,800 feet here. Uh, in the Rocky Mountains. All right. Awesome. Me and my wife. I love this picture. It looks like it's a picture frame, right? Because the picture is so beautiful too. But this is the view out one of the windows in the uh, where that restaurant, it's a whole little shop, a uh, little touristy thing in there. This is out one of the windows. You can tell there's the icicles. <laughs> beautiful, 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 right? Look at that. God is good. We were so blessed to be able to go. This is on top of the roof of that of that building. There's this glass bear. My son's over there taking pictures. There's a dome to look out at night, and they've got uh, heaters, and you can eat out there with a special group. I mean, it, it was just awesome. Look at that. Amazing, amazing, right? All right, so that's enough of that. I wanted to show you guys that so you can kind of see a little bit more of, of who Alan is and you know, a little family time, or not see who he is, but see what he looks like. <laughs> Sorry, not third person. See what I look like. All right. Now, let's get into uh, today's video. Let's get into today's video. I'm going to start, like I said, with this video from Paul Begley. This was just, um, what was this? On the 15th, all right? So just three days ago. I saw it, I think, I saw it yesterday uh, or the day before, actually. I want to show you, I want you to listen, because this is what generally happens. Anything that's talking about the rebuilding of the temple, and they're about to rebuild it, all of a sudden, everything in Scripture that, that speaks about rebuilding the temple, boom, that's the time of the third temple, and it's about to be rebuilt. We know better, and I'm going to show it to you from the Scriptures that he's quoting as the time of the rebuilding of the temple that is about to begin. Not picking on Pastor Begley, right? Paul, pa Pastor Begley, I believe, is doing exactly what he should be doing. They're saving a lot of people. He's saving a lot of people. They're getting baptized. He's, he's keeping people up to date and aware of events going on in the world. But we've been given greater understanding in relation to the end times and how things, what scriptures are speaking to what and where. All right? Do we have everything? Do we have all the answers? No. Obviously, none of us do. But we have a heck of a lot more than what's being taught. All right? And I'm going to prove it. Listen to this. And the prophecy of the book of Amos is getting ready to come to pass. I want to read it for you. All right? Are you serious? Are you ready for this? The third temple is going to be built. It is not the house of the Antichrist. It's the house 
of the Lord. The Antichrist will come in and try to hijack. Hear that? Let's start with that right off the bat. Let's start with that right off the bat. Let's go have a look at that. Uh, see, I'm getting fired up, guys. I'm getting excited. I just feel sometimes there's that overwhelming feeling. I, my eyes are starting to well up with tears. Man, if he only understood. Look at how big his ministry is. Hundreds of thousands of people subscribed. People hearing them all over the world. If we could help them realize and tell the people it is the 70th year and it's about to begin. Here is the understanding. Remember we talked about that? 70 weeks, the 70 years of Israel. Seven weeks of seals. Then the three and a half years. The wall and the streets. See? Look at this. Seven years will have passed. Starting from when? The seven weeks. 70, sorry. The 70 years which we're in right now. And who is he speaking to? Who is Daniel speaking to? Thy people, to Judah. Seven years from the 70th shall pass, making it now 77 years. And then for the next three and a half years, the street shall be built again and the wall. Huh. Not the foundation, the wall. Even in troublous times. Meaning what? Foundation would have already been laid. How are you going to build the wall if the foundation's not laid? Oh, just you wait and see. Overwhelmed, guys. Sorry. All right. And after those three and a half years, while Messiah is here at the beginning of trumpets, did you just hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? This is not the temple being built to the Antichrist. This is the temple that Messiah is going to be here overseeing at the beginning of trumpets. After the seven years of seals, for three and a half years, Messiah will be here. And he's going to be, if you will, overseeing from Zion, as we've shown many, many times. And for three and a half years, they're going to re be rebuilding the city and the streets and the wall even in troublous times. And after those three and a half years, <clears throat> Messiah Jesus is going to be cut off. Why? Because the people of the prince who shall come. Who, is this the Antichrist being spoken about? No. No, it's not. It's Satan being spoken about. The first seven years of seals... Messiah returns. Well, he's going to be in here. They're going to see him. They're going to attack. Remember all the, the war that breaks out? The Gog-Magog war. I'm going to show you guys today this about six months. And then what do we have? The beginning of trumpets. And what do we have? Messiah, the Lamb on Mount Zion with the 144,000. And for the first three and a half years, what are they doing? They're rebuilding the city and the streets and the wall. And at the time before the fifth trumpet, when Satan loses his battle and is cast down to the earth, Messiah shall cut himself off. Did you hear what Paul Begley said? It'll be the temple to the Messiah. And then he says the Antichrist. Now, do you know why this is being said? Because people only understand seven years. The Antichrist is setting them up for Satan. You see, they only understand seven years. <clears throat> oh man, I went through this with my wife. I, this might mess you up, but get ready for this. He only understands seven years, but guess what? Paul Begley and many of them, many teachers out there and pastors believe in pre-tribulation. They believe in pre-tribulation, but what they speak of is from trumpets forward. They believe the rapture is pre-tribulation and that the escape is the rapture. But the rapture is 
pre-wrath of the Lamb. It's pre-Jacob's trouble. This is your time of, of the rapture. Before the final seven years. What are the final seven years? Rebuilding the, the city and the streets and the, and the sanctuary. Until the midpoint when Satan is cast out because he lost his battle in heaven. It'll last two and a half years of fighting till the Lord returns at the end of the sixth woe, or sorry, at the end of the, the sixth trumpet, and will cleanse everything out in that final year. I'm going to even show you from the scriptures he's talking about. I'm going to show you which book it even talks about. Matthew, Mark, or Luke. They're speaking everything with the temple which relates to the time of Trump. All of it. I'm going to show you what he's talking about in, uh, in um, oh man, this can, <laughs> if I said, yeah, see, pre-tribulation, but they're speaking rapture. They're talking the time of the temple about to be built when it's going to start here. They're saying it's the Antichrist that's going to come in and take it over, but it's Satan over here in Jesus' is, is Jesus' is building. You see, this is the one the Lord's building that's going to get taken over by Satan because he's going to, Messiah is going to leave. And they're talking about it over here, but Messiah doesn't come till here. Man, it just, <laughs> you know, just keep going. All right. So we've talked about this. We have the seven years of seals, then three and a half years. Now, what are they going to Look, they're able to build the walls. How are they able to build walls? Because the foundations were already laid. When? during seals. See, you see anything about gates? No, you don't. You know why? Because they're at the end. They're at the end. All right? So you have your seven years of seals, first three and a half years of trumpets. It's going to be getting rebuilt, the walls and the streets, even in troublous times. Three and a half years in, Messiah's going to get cut off. Satan will have been cast down with his bad guys, with the fallen angels and the demons. And for two and a half years, they're going to be destroying the city and the streets and going after all the remnant. And then in the final year, at the end of the sixth trumpet, Messiah is going to return, feet down on the Mount of Olives with all power. All right? Listen to this. Just like the, the devil tries to hijack every church. That he and that's what I was getting. See, because they only understand seven years, they call... The Antichrist, Satan. Now, is it the spirit of Ant is the spirit of Satan going into the Antichrist? Absolutely. But is it Satan? No. Satan's time is coming when his battle is kicked out. He loses in heaven and he's kicked out. That is the fifth trumpet, the time frame of the fifth trumpet. But if you only understand seven years, well, then Satan must be the Antichrist. He is both. But if that were possible, how is it that two of them get sent in to the lake of fire and Satan is still about? See, there are three. Deuteronomy 32.30, right? Two shall chase a thousand and one shall put flight to a thousand, uh, to ten thousand, or where was it? Two shall chase or put flight to ten thousand and one shall chase a thousand. That is the Antichrist and the false prophet going after the great multitude, the 10,000 times 10,000 going after the church. Satan is going after, the one is going after the thousands who are Judah. All right, the Hebrews going after God's people. The Antichrist is against Christ. Satan is against God. That's what's going on. Let's keep going. But he cannot, nothing can stop the power of the prophetic word of God. Here's what the scripture says. In Amos chapter 9, here's what God said he would do, a prophecy that has still not been fulfilled. In Amos 9 verse 11, the Lord says, In that day... Will I raise up the tabernacle of David, 
that is fallen. All right, so we know it's fallen because it fell in 70 AD. And to close up the breaches thereof, I will secure the borders and protect, in other words, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build, I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes. All right, let's just go into it instead of listening to the whole thing there. Check this out. All right, we'll cover it. Listen to what he says. I've, told, I've done a video on this. It was a while ago, but there's been a lot of new people since. I'm not going to go through all of it, but Amos with the nine chapters is the last two years of seals, 2023, 2024, and these are the last seven years of trumpets. He even starts off by letting us know two years before the earthquake. Which earthquake? It doesn't say a great earthquake. It says earthquake. And see, who's going to roar from Zion in two years? The Lamb. And now check this out. He's gone, and we've gone through many of this. Like I said, I'm not going to go into all of it. This would then be what? The 14th year, correct? This would then be the year 2031, like we have shown a million times, in the final year, what we were just reading in Daniel 9:27. In the final year, when the Lord returns, to clean the house and to clean and restore everything. Look at what it says. But you see the way Pastor Begley was reading it. He reads it as if it's the time when he's coming to rebuild it. Right? When they're, they're going to start building the temple. That is not the case. Watch. In the day, uh, sorry, in that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. There are no breaches to be patching up right now. There, there's no temple to, to patch up. And I will raise up the ruins and build it as in the days of old. And then look at what he says. And I will bring again the, captivi the captivity of my people Israel. He's bringing them back to himself, his captivity. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. See, these are the wasted cities that were destroyed surrounding Israel. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. And they shall make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of the land which I have given them, says the Lord. Really? Really? Do you guys get that? So when he comes to rebuild this temple, according to Paul Begley, they will never be taken out of their land again. That simply is not true. He said it himself. He said until Satan comes, or the Antichrist, when he comes, well, then he's going to take it over. Well, that's not what this says. This says nobody's going to be able to take them out. Why? Because this is not the time frame of the beginning of trumpets or what he thinks is about to happen now, the beginning of seals. This is not the rebuilding of the city and streets that we saw in Daniel 9, 25 and 26. This is when he returns in the 14th year. When he returns in the final year, it all has to get fixed up. Hence closing the breaches thereof. And when he returns in the final year, they're going to be rebuilding all of the surrounding areas and everything. You see that? When he comes at the beginning of trumpets, they're going to be rebuilding the city and the streets and so forth around Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. But all of the surrounding cities, they're not going to be doing that yet. That's going to take more time. But Satan's going to come and just start destroying and, and set up uh, the, the final image and all of those things. Now, yes, the Antichrist is doing that as well. But Satan is going to come and he's going to set up his thing there. 
and they're going to destroy everything until the final year. When the Lamb returns in the final year and closes up the breaches thereof, and they start fixing up the ruins and everything else, then he's going to plant them in their city, and they're going to plant vineyards and do all these things, and they shall never be removed or pulled out of their land again. Now, where can we show this? Well, let's have a look. You guys know the Zechariah talk about it all the time. You know, look at chapter 8, which we've covered many times. When is the Lord returning? This is the year, 2018. Remember, it's a year goes from spring to spring. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Rapture year. Boom, 2025. What happens in 2025? The Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives. Oh, sorry, sorry, on, the, on Mount Zion. We'll return on Mount Zion. Hence, that's the, your ending, the, your time of your Ezekiel 38, 39 war. All right? It'll be over, and now we'll begin the time of what? Here's the Lord returned on Mount Zion. All right? They will know it's his holy mountain. What did they start doing? They're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets. I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, says the Lord. Let your hands be strong, you that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophet, of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of the hosts was built, that the, uh, sorry, it was laid, that the temple might be built. And look at this. For before these days, there was no hire for man nor beast, neither was there any peace to them that went, or went, went in or came out because of the affliction. And what was the affliction? In the 70th year. In the 70th year. Israel never got to turn 71. Even tells us again right here. Those 70 years. When you read in chapter 1, it says these 70 years. They were in the 70th. Here they are seven years later. And saying, did you do these things even during those 70 years? You see? Believe it or not, I do have some notes I'm following here. All right, so in relation, we're going to touch back on, uh, on Zechariah 8. But to follow with what we were saying with um, uh, uh, with the Lord's uh, return in Amos 9 to show what Paul Begley was talking about was completely the wrong place. You see, Paul Begley is he's even thinking, and many teachers are doing this because they don't understand the timing and who the books are speaking to. He's putting this time at the beginning of seals when really the time he's thinking of at the beginning of seals is really the beginning of trumpets. But where he's even applying it is wrong because it's actually talking about the final year. Do you understand how confusing, how on earth are people to understand what the scriptures are saying when, you're, when we're being taught like that? Right? Yes, we see through a glass dimly lit, but here we are seeing it more. The Spirit is working and giving us these understandings because the time is short and there's a work to be done. What do we see here? Okay, let's see in the year, the final year, the 14th year. And his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives. There's the Lord returning on the Mount of Olives. When did we show this? Right, we show this what? At the end of the sixth trumpet, we see there was a great earthquake. And everybody looked up in, at the end of the sixth trumpet. Everybody looks up and they give glory to the Lord of heaven, to the God of heaven. Why? Because he's returned, they see him coming down, feet down, boom. Feet down, returned on the Mount of Olives to cleanse everything. Look, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. And men shall dwell in, the, in Jerusalem, there shall be no more destruction in Jerusalem, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Huh. When the Lord returns, 
to repair and restore what's been destroyed by Satan who had come. The breaches are going to be closed and they're going to be rebuilding all of the lands around, drinking from the gardens and the vineyards of everything they were planting. And they will no longer be pulled out of their land. Watch where these, this is stuff, this is just crazy, crazy, where all this stuff is going to lead. You guys are going to see this. Like I said, I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit. I'm just debating on where I want to bounce next. Maybe what I'll do, uh, let me go right to, uh, let me show you this great example. It'll kind of lead us into where we're going next. And it will reveal what we're talking about here, not being taken out of their land anymore. Look at this in the in the Gospels. Look at in Luke 24. All right. When you see when we've gone through the last chapter of each Gospel of, of the Synoptic Ones where there's a discourse in Luke, Mark and Matthew. <clears throat> sorry, give me one second. OK, so we've gone in the last chapter of Luke, Mark and Matthew before. But watch this. Let's do it again. When you read here in Luke's gospel, you see there's there's no bad speaking about what? The 12, right? He opened up their understanding. And when they knew it and they saw and they understood who he was, boom, he vanished. And they start talking about how awesome it was and saying that the Lord is risen indeed. And he appeared unto Simon, right? That's why we see what? In in Acts chapter 15, which is the beginning of the second set of 14 years, we see what? We see the talk that Simon said that the Lord will take out a people for himself from among the Gentiles first. This is where that came from. This was that understanding. And when they broke bread, it was known to them. Uh, and they were terrified. And who's who's being spoken to here? The disciples, right? The apostles. There's nothing negative being said about these apostles. Okay? Go read it for yourself in chapter 24. All right? He's talking to the disciples. And then peace be with you. They were terrified, thought they saw a spirit. And then the Lord vanishes. All right? And there is nothing negative speaking about them. Behold, the promise of my father and then the ascension and they're praying continuously in the temple. Look at the last chapter of Mark. All right. So what do we see in in Luke in the final chapter? It's talking about the disciples, right? Or the apostles there. When we get to Mark, look at what Mark says. He, The Lord appeared unto two of them, the two witnesses first. This is the understanding of it appeared unto the two witnesses, and they went and told the eleven, right? The apostles. They went and told them. And they didn't believe it. So Jesus let loose on them and gave them trouble. This is a representation of the 144,000. And how do we know that? Listen. And he said unto them, see, after he was risen, and was seen of them after he was risen, and said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he uh, that believeth not shall be damned. They're going to be able to cast out demons. They're going to be able to tread on serpents and drink things without being hurt and poisoned and so forth. And then we see that the Lord was received up. And what does he say? And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the Lord, uh, the word with signs following. We've shown this before. This is what these guys are doing here is the representation of your 144,000. All right. With going out and casting out devils and being able to take up serpents that they may drink any deadly thing and not be hurt. Uh, laying hands on the sick that they should recover. This is what your 144,000 are doing. When we get to Matthew, remember, now we're talking Matthew. When we get to the final chapter of Matthew, again, we're still tying this into Amos and what was being spoken about. What happens at the end of, at the end of Amos? The Lord will return. Nobody could be removed. They're not going to be taken out anymore, for the Lord is with them, right? 
He's going to remain with them and they will never again be removed out of their land. Right? And then we showed that in the other chapter. That they're not going to be removed because what happens? All right? The great commission where Jesus appointed unto them. Who? Again, the disciples or the apostles, right? Appointed unto them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. You see? It's spoken differently the third time. You have a group of apostles that were set for one piece of work. You have, which, which were the apostles. Then you have the 144,000 for Matthew, or sorry, in Mark, who are to go out and preach the word. None of that is spoken like that in Luke. And in Mark, you see that they're to go out and to do all these things, and the Lord is with them always. That is your 144,000. But now, when we get to Matthew, they weren't in disbelief or anything. There was some doubters, but a lot of them, the majority of them believed, right? We know that there was the doubting Thomas, right? But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, you, therefore, uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I am with you always, even until the end of the world. To the end of the millennium. You see, what does he, he tells them, all power is now given unto him in heaven and in earth. This is now a different group of 12. Which group of 12 is this? Those who were promised their lands. Remember the, the patriarchs. The ones in Matthew are the patriarchs. The ones in Mark are the 144,000. The ones in Luke are the apostles are the ones that are Jesus's. They're the apostles. And I'm going to show you how this connects. All right? Look at what he says. This is how you know it's the end, when he's returned in that final year. All power is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. He hasn't received that yet. Look, let's go into uh, uh, Revelation. Let's go to the end of the sixth trumpet. All right? We talked about this before, the end of the sixth trumpet. Here's the end of the sixth trumpet. The two witnesses now, we're at the end of the 13th year. The 14th year is about to begin. And in the same hour, the two witnesses have now been called up and their bodies stood up and boom, they, they went up. And in the same hour, there was a great earthquake. This is the one coming on Mount of Olives. And the 10th part, remember a year goes from spring to spring. And a 10th part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain 7,000 men. And the remnant were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, quickly the third woe is coming. All right, what's the third woe? The seventh trumpet. And listen to what it says. The kingdoms of, the, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. And the 24 elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God the Lord God Almighty when in the 14th and final year when all things are become his when they will no longer be destroyed and come against again it is over when he seals up the breaches, coming back to restore it all and no longer be removed or pulled out again because everything that is his is now, everything is now his on heaven and in the earth. It is the Daniel 9 same thing. What does he come to do? Guys, this is why we're so crazy. This is why I'm, I'm speaking so aggressively and loud. I can't help myself. I'm not doing it purposely. I just, 
It's it's like pounded in. I know many of you guys guys out there are getting it. I know, but you be careful when you go watch these other channels that are teaching you where and when these things are happening, but yet don't understand it's even about to take place. And those that believe it's about to take place believe it's going to be the rapture. And that the escape of the bride is the rapture and it's not. There are three. Escape, rapture, return. Escape, rapture, return. Escape, rapture, return. There are three. And it begins by the end of the 70th. There'll be seven years of seals. Three and a half years of rebuilding. Then leaving, Messiah leaving, and then two and a half years with them destroying the city and the sanctuary. And then in the final year, he's going to return. And what is he going to do? And the oblation, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, so see, there was overspreading of abominations taking place. He, Messiah, shall make it desolate. I've said it before. If this is the Antichrist that everybody's talking about, or this is the Satan, why would he, for the overspreading of abomination, destroy it? And come and clean it out? Because this is Messiah returning in his final, returning at the final and 14th year to clean it all up, to patch the breaches of it. And to restore and give them back in their land. That's what's going on. All of the Gospels, all of it is saying the same thing. They're speaking the exact same language. Let me go into... Let me go into... Uh, this whole thing with foundations, all right? Like I said, I used to think that this foundational thing, just like we were reading up here, they're going to be building the walls. Well, if they're starting to build the walls and the streets and so forth again in, in the beginning portion of Trumpets, the foundation must have been laid. And how can we understand then who the foundation was? Who or what is this representation of the foundation? Because the wall is now going to begin. And then after the walls are put in, the gates can go up, right? Let's go look at this. Let's look here even. Let, give me an, I'll show you an example. In Ezekiel, right? Or sorry, sorry. Zechariah chapter 8, which is the year 2025. It's going to be the year of return feet down on the Mount of Olives. Remember, a year goes from spring to spring, right? So that 2025, early 2025 time frame. And look at this. If you want to look at it like this, you can say, okay, well, here, the 14 years, right? There's seven left to go to 2021, and what do we see? And I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with them, 144,000. When? In that 2024, 2025 year, right? At the end of 2024 into 2025. The Lamb will now be on Zion with the 144,000. And by 2025, what do we have? Right? He's returned. It's established. And the three and a half years of rebuilding the city and the streets uh, and, and the walls is going to begin. But look at what it says here. Remember, we're focusing now on the foundation. Zechariah 8, 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong, you that hear in these days these words by the mouth of of the prophets which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid that the temple might be built. The foundation was laid before what? Before trumpets began. Before trumpets began. Before trumpets began. You see, there was no other labor for men or for beast because there was no peace on the earth. Because what? Because the tribulation began. Peace left. Right? And neighbor was against neighbor. Right? Nation against nation. City against city. People against people. Neighbor against neighbor. Beginning of the discourses. 
But now the affliction of that is over. Trumpets is about to begin. But you see, the foundation was laid during what? The foundation was laid during the seven years of seals. So that when the three, first three and a half years of trumpets begins, they can start building the walls. Follow that? Now let's identify who these people are. Right? Showed you 14. Let's go to the year 2021. Or sorry, 2031, the final year. What do you see? They're coming down, right? As a, as a bride prepared and adorned. But I want to show you something. I want to get to a certain place. And what do you see? So yeah, here's another thing. It is done. It's done. When? In the final 14th year. This is the year 2031. He's returned. And what? It is done. All has been given to him in heaven and on earth. Right? In fact, you know what? Look at Revelation chapter 10. We showed you in Revelation 11. Look at Revelation chapter 10. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, all right, the seventh trumpet sounding angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he hath declared it to his servants, the prophets. And then everybody should start getting what? Their rewards, right? And then people will start getting their things, right? See? So awesome. I love this. I love this. I can't believe I can connect all these things, guys. It is so amazing. All right? And watch this. Let's go down and let's see this new Jerusalem. All right? Look at this. Um, Revelation 21, verse 12. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And the 12 gates, 12 angels, and the names thereon were the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Who are the 12 tribes speaking to again? Matthew. The end, right? The end. The gates go up last. You need a foundation before you could build your walls, before you can have your openings for people to go in and out of. When are people going to be going in and out of the gates? At the end. During the millennial reign. At the end. That's when the children of the houses and so forth will be going in and out through those gates. Who's, who gets the promise at the end? The Israelites, the Hebrews. Right? The 14th year. We go back and we, we've done it before many times as well recently. You can go into Genesis chapter 16 and 17 and you see the story of Ishmael when, when he was born and Abraham was 86 years old and 14 years later he has... Isaac, who is the representation of Christ, whereas Ishmael is the representation of Satan and the Antichrist, 14 years prior, and what happens in that 14th year? God tells him his promise, his promise will have come. In the 14th year, his promise came. And the gates will be established, and they will be able to come in and out. Gates are last. The 12 tribes. What else do you have? Verse 14. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And what else do we have? Verse 17. And he measured the wall thereof. 144 cubits according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. This wall, see the foundations of the wall were the different stones, right? So what do we have? 
we have foundations who are the 12 apostles of Jesus, right? We have the representation of 144,000 who are what? The wall. That's why we see the wall is going to get rebuilt during the time of trumpets. The 144,000 are the representations of the wall, not the foundation. And the 12 gates, whoops, the 12 gates are the 12 tribes, the heads of the 12 tribes. Now, what am I saying? Everything that was will be. There's nothing new under the sun. What was shall be again. What went forward is now going to go in reverse. Matthew, Mark, and Luke is Luke, Mark, Matthew. The foundations, the walls, the gates. Foundation is laid at the beginning. The walls are laid in the middle of construction. And the gates will be built, will be opened at the end for who? The tribes that are going to get what? Ezekiel. Remember I said Ezekiel? We taught on this. 33 is where we are right now. The watchman, we're waiting for that shout. That watchman's got to go out. 18 to 19, 19 to 20. Remember, spring to spring. This is the end. This is 2024, all right, 2023, 2024. This is what? 2025 and the end of the 14th, beginning of the 15th year, all right? And what do we see? Oh, the 25th year and the beginning of the year and the 10th day of the month, the 14th year. So it's telling you it's the 25th year and the 14th year. Well, how about that? It's exactly what we show. The beginning of the year of 2025 is the tail end of the 14th year. And it's right here in Zechariah 40. Guys, this isn't the first time we've done this, and not just in Ezekiel, in many, many books. Luke chapter 3, why do you think it says in the 15th year of Tiberius? Yes, it is to give us an understanding of Christ and his time frame. But it is also telling us the 15th year from the beginning of the twenty one. I know that'll mess some of you guys up, but those that have been watching for a while, just go check it out. Go follow this stuff, all right? The tribulation is 14 years, but like Jacob, it's 21 years. Revelation is 21 and 22nd chapter. We've got a video. The first video in the, in the, in the series of study notes is the 21st year, the final 21 years, and the 22nd. The Hebrew, Bible, or the Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters. It is about the final 21 years that began in 2011, 2012. And those seven years that the Holy Spirit has been working to wake up and gather the bride together. There's going to be one final 40-day push that is going to be so supernatural throughout the world that is going to wake up a bunch. Now, how many? Still, only about 2% of the world is going to get it. And the rest will go back to sleep and hum and haw over it or just deny it altogether. The bride, I believe, is only about 2% of the population of the world. In fact, I believe it's going to be 1.8% of the population of the entire world. But don't get too caught up in that. All right? So just like Jacob, he worked seven years before he got his first bride. Then seven more years, and then he got the next one. And then the last seven were for what? The cattle. All right? It's just a representation of people. It is 21 years. So when you see in Luke chapter 3, in the 15th year of Tiberius, that is the 15th year from the beginning of the tribulation, which would put it what? In the year 2025. It's the beginning of trumpets. You know, in, in Jacob in, uh, in, uh, Jacob and his, and his two wives, over in, uh, in, in Genesis 29, you see how he says the first seven years were easy. They flew by as if they were days because he was excited to do it. That's the Holy Spirit working through us and with us right now. 
to, in, to reveal to us this timing, excited to gather the bride together. Same thing going on here. In the 25th year from the 2000s, you could say, all right, 2025, which is the end of the 14th year. All right, and what do we see? Boom. They're building, rebuilding the temple, the city and the streets. It's the three and a half years of trumpets. The first three and a half years of trumpets, they're rebuilding all the city and the streets. All right, they're building it all. And it lasts for three and a half years. But look at this. In the final year, in the 14th year, what do we see? All right, follow it through. And then what do we see right towards the end? And thus saith the Lord, this shall be the border whereby you shall inherit the land according to the 12 tribes. According to the 12 tribes. And Joseph shall have two positions. And it's about their lands right into the final year. This goes into 2033. And boom, it started here in 2032 into 2033. And what do we see? Jake, uh, uh, Joseph got two. And then we've got from that border to this border, boom, it's Dan's portion. And then from that border to this border is Asher. When? When do these 12 get their, get their, their lands? In the final year. And they're going to be here for what? The millennial reign. Daniel is told what? Just, you're going to be lying in your plot. You're going to be dead lying in your plot until the time of the end. You'll be raised up again. Because of what? Their promise. So if we take this backwards, we see here now in the final year, in the 22nd, from the end of the 20, 21st to the 22nd, after the Lord has cleansed everything, they're going to return in the land. They're going to be rebuilding the outer streets and rebuilding everything now, and they will never be harmed again. They're going to have their vineyards and everything else growing, and they will be never removed out of their land again. And what do they get? The 12 tribes get their land back the 12 tribes will receive their lands who will be entering in by the gates their according gates that will surround jerusalem their promise now we take that backwards what had to take place before that The 144,000 had to go in and preach and wake them all up. Wake them up, baptize them all, everybody who would come to get baptized. All right? It goes into, uh, into Luke chapter 3 again. Luke chapter 2 is about the starting time of the seals. Luke chapter 3, you see the 25th year, it's the starting time of trumpets. And you see in Luke chapter 3 when the Lord says, who told you, vipers? Who told you to come and be baptized to avoid the wrath that's coming? You see, to be what? To get baptized. So they could be saved from all of these things. You see, these are the 144,000. The wall is about to get built. And then we go, like we said, we're going in reverse. This is the end. This is the middle. This is... The Thomas Seals. And what do we have? It's about the disciples, but nothing, they're not, they're not being, uh, um, they're not being spoken of in a way that's, that's giving them trouble. They were ready. Their eyes were open. They understood. Scriptures were revealed to them. And they rose up the same hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered, gathered together. And them that were with them. And like I said, there's your Simon part, right? This is your this is your speaking of your escape of the bride. Taking out a people of the Gentiles, Simon said. Which we read in Acts 15 for the year 2018 slash 19. You see, and in the breaking of bread, they knew. 
and they understood. In Mark, they get in trouble. He railed them, right? He unbraided them, it said. He, he just gave them a, a tongue lashing because they didn't believe who? The two witnesses. That's Mark uh, thir 16. All right? Now watch this. Let me show you something. Let me show you another little piece of this beautiful puzzle. Uh, Luke chapter, oops, Luke chapter 22. Watch this. We, we touched on this before in a bit, right? Watch. What does he tell them? Oh, first of all, look at this, right? Then Satan entered Judas. Then Satan entered Judas. Who? The Antichrist. All right? Satan is going to enter the Antichrist. Well, when you go into the uh, Genesis 8, which we've spoken about recently, and we did the video on breaking it down, you see the raven. Right? The Antichrist is going to be Muslim. From the dusky skin and the, the colors, it, it explains it all. And it means Allah. The word in the Greek is Allah. All right? It, the raven is sent out and so is the dove. But it's Noah that sends him out. And when Noah opens that window and sends him out, do you think he's got one in one hand and one in the other? No, he's probably grabbing one at a time. He sends out the raven first. And then it says, also the dove. Now, I don't think he had one in each hand and threw them out the window at the same time. Antichrist is going to be sent out. And so is the dove immediately after. But the Antichrist is going out first. Are these, is this person here on earth? Yeah, but do they don't know who they are yet. There's a lot of wicked people. There's a lot of people we speculate as the ones who are going to receive it. But they're not, they don't know it yet. It's not, he's not in them yet. All right? Not truly. But very soon, many believe that that could even be what's coming in two to three days. Maybe even a day or two. All right? Whether this is the, the real Purim or the calendar, you know, it's what I'm saying. This is the beginning of the year, and this wasn't. You know, others are saying that uh, on the Hebrew calendar, well, this is the beginning uh, 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 is the beginning of the year. All right, whichever the case may be, it will all begin before Jerusalem or Israel turns 71. And look at what, as we keep going down. All right, we see there. Who's going to go up? The 12 are going to go up in what? To the guest chamber with, to be with the Lord, right? To make ready. And there's your 12 apostles with them. And then watch this. Listen to this. All right? And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they exercise authority upon them and are called benefactors. But you shall not do so. The 12 are going to go out to work among the Gentiles. The apostles didn't do that. They went and worked for the Jews, except for uh, a couple of them are Paul and so forth, right? Okay? But you shall not do so. You're going to be servants, right? Just like myself, the first is last, and he was greater and so forth. <clears throat> and look what he says. You are they which have continued with me in my temptations. How long was that temptation as well? It was 40 days, wasn't it? What are we waiting for? Only from Luke chapter 11 do we see this. The 40 days, as Jonah was assigned, so shall the Son of Man be for 40 days. These 12 are those that were with him for 40 days. And we see even from the book of Acts, from the end of chapter 1, or from the end of chapter 15, which is in that first year, and what do we read? We read that the, the, the 12, the disciples, were already, the 11 actually, because they had to choose another one, and they chose Matthias. But what do we read? They were gathered together in that upper room already. And then the disciples, those 120 came and started receiving those powers to, to speak in tongues and do all those things. Watch this. Let's keep going because this is awesome. 
Uh, Luke 22, verse 29. Remember, we're talking Luke and then Mark and then Matthew. We know we're not going to go into Mark anymore. We know where those 144,000 are. All right. They get sealed at the end of the sixth seal and before the seventh seal, which we are going to talk about that seventh seal. And we know when they do their work. It's during the time of trumpets. All right. So listen to this. This is the beginning. And he says, and I appoint unto you, Luke 22, verse 29, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. They will each of these 12, which 12? These are Jesus's. These are the apostles. And they're about to be activated again, whether it's their spirit in them or it's a representation of new groups. Everything that was will be again. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. They're going to receive their own kingdoms. And they're going to get to sit and eat and drink at the Lord's table, at our Lord and Savior's table himself, judging the 12 tribes. All right? There's who, so who do we have here? The apostles. They're going to dine at his table. Mark is your 144,000 in there. Well, what about Matthew? Check out Matthew. Matthew 19. Look at what it says. It's incredible. I love it. When I, when I came across this, I was like, what is that? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, the rebirth, the spiritual renovation, messianic restoration. Well, when does the messianic restoration happen? At the end. that have been with me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. When? The final year. You also shall sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. But these are not the same people. This group does not receive uh, their own kingdoms. Look at what these 12 receive. And every one that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wives or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. And many that shall be last shall be first. You see, I believe this actually also ties in with the 144,000. All right, to receive all of their lands back, everything that they gave up to go and follow the Lord during the trumpets. But there are 12 heads over them as well. You see, because they're sitting on 12 other thrones. See, 12 thrones. And in, and in Luke, we saw what? Another 12 thrones. At the end of the, the sixth trumpet into the seventh trumpet, what do we see? That's right. The Lord with all power and authority in heaven and earth. And what? The 24 elders fell before the Lord. These are your 12 gates. Your walls are the 144,000. And your foundation are the apostles that were there helping working during the time of seals. It'll be a much smaller amount during seals than the 144,000 of trumpets. But that's because there will be many left in the world who will have heard and know of Christ and maybe believed even in Christ, but just weren't ready because their flesh was weak, even though their spirit was willing. Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy stuff. Watch this. I told you I wanted to show you something in relation from that Ezekiel 38-39 war. To the relation, what do we know? This is the beginning of trumpets. This is the end of seals. 
all right, when they will have had their Gog-Magog war, when the Lord destroys them, right? They'll be burning then seven years. During seven years of trumpets, they won't need to cut down trees or anything. They'll be able to burn those weapons during that entire time of trumpets. And what else happens? And there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the Valley of Hamgog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them, that they may what? Cleanse the land. It must be cleansed, right? And for how long? Seven months. Well, what has just taken place? That massive war in the Valley of Gog and Magog, right? The, the Gog-Magog war. It's now the end of it. The seal's time is just about up. You see the Lord and, and the, the him who sits on the throne and the Lamb at the end of the sixth seal. You see the 144,000 get sealed, so the war is over. They get sealed. The rapture of the church then happens. And then what do you have? You still have the seventh seal. And the seventh seal says what? And when he had opened the seventh seal... There was silence in heaven for about the space, approximately the space of half an hour. About, all right, about the space of half an hour. So about six months. Do you think seven months qualifies as about six months? There it is. Once it's all over, They've been sealed, they're set, the rapture happens. Those that are now what? Making their way to Jerusalem because Zion is now established there over Jerusalem. The house of Israel is going to be cleansing for about half an hour. They're going to be cleansing the land for about half an hour. It's at the perfect place, guys. The chapter 39, we've shown it, is the end of the sixth seal. They finished the war, and we know that, in fact, we can show it even in 2nd Ezra. Right? We've shown it in 2nd Ezra. The Lord takes out a people for himself, and then it's neighbor against neighbor. Right? Everybody's freaking out. Then they, the, the, the mountain that the Lord had cut out for himself... And flew upon it. The multitude that see this are freaking out. But they're going to stop the wars that they've had against each other. And they're going to come against this him on the great mountain. Somebody's flying. The Lord on the great mountain. Carved without hand as Daniel said. And they will gather against him to wage war even though they're terrified. And what he's going to do? Without a weapon or without anything, just with his voice, with the breath, boom, they're all finished. When? At the end of the sixth seal. Zechariah, guys, Zechariah has so much in that understanding for us. And that's why we see here, look at in the 14th year, in that final year, when he comes, look at what it says. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Meaning he, he fought another day of battle. Prophetic. When? Ezekiel 38, 39. They're finishing up their war and they're coming to fight against him and he's going to what? Wipe them out. And when it's over, they're going to have weapons to burn for seven years. And for seven months after it's all done, they're going to be cleaning up and purifying the land of all the death and bones and everything there. And that will take them to the end of the seventh seal. Isn't that incredible? 
man, oh man, God is good. And I know this is a jam-packed one, guys. So I pray you guys will take that time, be patient, and pause, and, and rewind, and watch different parts that you need to. Take the time, because this is the understanding. These are the revelations of the end coming to light that we may know and understand what's happening. You see, what, what, are, all, what are the rabbis saying now? Right? There's all this talk that Messiah is going to come before the election, that a, a Messiah is coming, and maybe at Purim they're saying, because of the signs that they've seen with the sun, moon, and stars, and they understand. Now, we understand what that means. They're, they're, they're going to see Antichrist coming first. All right? But what are they doing? They're saying that the Jews in America need to leave America because that devastation, that, that blood moon that happened on Tuba Shavat is a sign for America. So all Jews get out and go to Israel. I'm telling you, do not go to Israel. Because going to Israel, you are going to flee. Is America going to be devastated by something first? Yes, I believe so. Yes, I believe this the first great earthquake or, you know, because of this peace deal, the peace deal will not divide the land uh, of Jerusalem, but they're going to give land from Israel and establish Palestine as a state. And for that, America and other nations are probably parts of uh, Europe. There are There is going to be devastation. But it's going to come to America first, and I believe it's going to be that West Coast. Maybe something happened on the East Coast as well. It is not the ripping of America in two yet. So, and again, that relates to Psalms chapter 18. All right, and Psalms chapter 18 is for the year 18. Remember, a year goes from spring to spring, 18 to 19. And you can go to Psalms 118, which is also part of it when we see the gates of heaven opening. It's all about to begin, Israel will not turn 71. And would I, if I was Jewish, would I go back to the homeland that they're saying now, go back now because of the devastation coming upon America? No, because what's coming next, if you're living in the land of Israel, you're going to know to get out. There will be this 40-day warning. There will be people preaching to get out. And it will most likely start from Israel. All right? It generally always starts from, from Jerusalem. It's coming. And while they're calling the Jews to go back to Israel, when they start returning, destruction comes upon them. But for those that will listen, who will have ears to hear, they will know to flee. Most won't, but we know many will flee. But destruction is coming. Watch, let's go, let me show you one last thing and we'll finish up. Watch this in Hosea. <clears throat> we've showed you before, and I'm not going to go into everything, but we've showed you before that Hosea, with its 14 chapters, Hosea is speaking to the to the Gentiles side, if you will. All right, to the to the 14 years from one perspective, whereas Zechariah is showing it from the perspective of timing. All right, to to Judah, it is timing, 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 and it starts before 71. Hosea, listen to this. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, who's a representation of the deliverer, the Lord, right? Jesus. In the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredom and children of whoredom. Why is that? The Gentiles, right? The whoredom, the Gentiles, that's us. That's what Simon was saying. You know, that he will take for himself, unto himself, a group from the Gentiles first. Look at the beginning. Look at that. In the first chapter, second verse, first year of the 14. The beginning. In the sense of opening. Huh. In the sense of opening. Sound familiar? In the sense of opening. Opening what? The first seal. 
The first seal is a 40-day seal. It is the Son of Man. As we read in Luke 11, the sign of Jonah, as Jonah was the 40-day sign, so shall the Son of Man be. To what? The Lord God told him. The Father told him, go get your Gentile bride. And the preparation of this Gentile bride, she will receive 40 days to gather together and to wake up. That not only is her spirit willing, but that her flesh is ready. That we are not falling into sin. That we are repenting daily and know that we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to turn to and to ask for forgiveness. And when these 40 days begin, boy, oh boy, we had better stay clean. We had better stay away from sin. It's coming. I personally believe it'll be in that first week of April. But in any case, it will be before Israel turns 71. In the beginning. Watch this. Sorry, not in the beginning. The beginning. Opening. Commencement. To begin, first time, opening of the first seal, Luke 21. All right, Luke 21, verse 28, I believe it is. All right. You see a lot of people say, oh, nobody knows the day or hour. Well, when there's a 40-day warning, when he starts appearing to his own and those shepherds are calling out, we will know the time. We do know it's before Israel turns 71. This day or hour is because people are always learning from Matthew. When all of these generations, we should have been learning from the book of Luke. Luke is the prepare, preparation for the bride. Mark is for the left behind of the church. And for the sleeping portion of the church. And Matthew is for Judah. And in every case, there are people from each. Judah's got a few mixed in with the bride, but few that we know the Lord said. A, a, a harvest always works with a tithe, a portion, a small portion that goes to the Lord. 10% of the church will go as the bride. The 90% will remain during seals, of which that 90% that remains, a small percentage of that, will even remain during trumpets. And the reason, you'll even see them coming into salvation during the time of trumpets, but they're going to have to be obedient to more rules, to more laws. Because the time of the Gentiles will be over after seals. There is always three pieces to a harvest. There is a first fruits, the first portion, whether it's wheat or whether it's grapes or whatever the harvest, it is the first fruits of it. Then you have your main great harvest, which is your core piece. And then you've got corners and gleaning. Every harvest has all three. I've shown it with the pictures before. There is an overall harvest. God is at the top. And you've got Jesus at first. And then you've got the church in the second, the main harvest. And then you've got Judah as the corners and gleaning. But within each of the harvests, there are each of them. And you know, that is exactly what's happening with the wheat. There is a first fruits of the bride about to go. There is the main harvest of the rapture of the church and the corners and gleaning will come during trumpets in different obediences within uh, that time of Judah. When the grapes come, guess what? There's the first fruits, the 144,000. They're the first fruits to the, to the Hebrews, to the time of Judah. And then they're going to have their big moment of aha. And they're going to have their grape harvest, that, that main portion come in. And then will be the trickling of the, of the leftovers, even into the, during the millennium, those that have survived. They all have three. And this is where we're at. And you see, we've been taught from Matthew. Matthew, 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 Matthew. And everything means the same to everything, everywhere, regardless and it's all part of the same time. No, it's not. Do you understand what's happening here? This is the truth. These are the end time understandings. 
Luke doesn't say anything about not knowing the day or hour. Nothing. He says, this is what Luke says in K instead. Watch and take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be overcharged, right? Don't get caught unawares. Don't be caught in the snares of this world. But watch and pray always that you may be found accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man who we're told is going to come as the 40-day sign. He, the Son of Man himself. And what do we have at the end before this? In verse 28, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, bride, for your redemption draws nigh. This is not spoken about in Mark nor in Luke. And when these things begin, now see, remember, this is still this is still the Hebrew, right? This is from this is from Hosea chapter verse chapter one, verse two. The beginning, the commencement, the opening of the first seal. When these things begin to come to pass. There's the Greek word. Commence. In order of time. In order of time. Perfect, hey? Eh? From the, right? Rehearse from the beginning. To commence. And op the opening. Commencement. Beginning. First time. Get ready, bride. Get ready, bride. Time is short. I have no idea how many more videos I'll be able to get out. But get ready, bride. Get ready. Time is short. Time is short. Get ready to hear them. Get ready to see them. For the time is moments. Moments. Moments, moments, moments away. Love you guys. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.